Okay, we're going to look at this uh, rather complex concept about which is internal resistance and electromotive force, or EMF. Um, it looks complex initially, but once you break it down, you see that it's just about internal resistance, and that the internal resistance can just be considered like a resistor, which is anywhere in the circuit. Um, it becomes more straightforward. Now, this is the basic circuit. Now, this here is the EMF of the battery. All right, this is the electromotive force. This is the energy supplied um, per coulomb of charge passing through the battery um, transferred to electrical energy. Now, this is lost and transferred to other forms of energy as it passes through the different components. Now, the EMF here, some of it, some of the energy is lost across the internal resistance of our battery. So a battery has an internal resistance itself. And its internal resistance causes some of its, the energy to be lost. This is why in uh, certain powerful machines particularly, you'll notice batteries get very, very hot. Because the power output is low, the current is high, so this resistor, the external resistor, the load resistance is quite low. It draws a high current. Because this is low, um, then we often find that this resistor here it warms up because of its internal resistance. If this load here was very, very high, it would have all of the potential difference, and therefore the impact of the internal resistance is smaller. Um, but in this circuit here, uh, we can look at how we can calculate the different losses across the components. Now, this is the beginnings of EMF and internal resistance. So, if we use our laws of voltage, we know that the energy coming into the circuit, the EMF, equals the potential difference across our load resistance and our internal resistance. Now that's big V plus little v. Now this voltmeter here, we can see that it's also connected to our battery. Now when our load resistor is bigger than our internal resistance, which it normally would be, then what this voltmeter is doing is it's measuring the potential difference across this resistor here because this is smaller. Obviously if this were disconnected then the voltmeter would just read the potential difference across this battery which would be equal to the EMF. Now because this here, our EMF, is equal to the voltage loss there plus the voltage loss there, we can make this equal to other things as well. So we could say the EMF is equal to I, which is the current in the circuit, R plus I little r. Or we could say epsilon or EMF is equal to V plus I small r. So there's lots and lots of ways we could rearrange this equation to summarize what the EMF is. But basically it's our EMF equals the voltage lost here plus the voltage lost there. Okay. Now we could have this in a in in, a, in an exam problem. Now a typical typical exam problem would use this graphically and as part of a, a circuit problem such as this. So if we were to give be given it graphically, we might be asked to use something like this, where sigma equals v plus i r. So if we were given a problem such as this, and we remember our EMF equals voltage plus IR. Now if we were looking at our circuit here, and if we changed um, our resistor here, we would get different readings for current and we'd get different readings for voltage. So if this was a variable resistor and we could look at the current and the voltage characteristics, we could see that we could draw a graph of it. And if we drew a graph of it, we'd get this pattern here. Now, we can relate this graph to y equals mx plus c. It's a very simple GCSE maths. Now, if we remember y equals mx plus c, we need to remember what each of those things stands for. Now, at the moment, this, my y-axis, is v. So I'd need to rearrange my equation to make v the subject. So I could say that v equals epsilon minus IR. So V equals my EMF minus IR. 
Now then, my x-axis here is this, okay? So where I've got x here, I'd just like to swap this around so that this comes there. So I could say v equals minus i r plus emf, sigma. So I've rearranged this equation so it takes the format of y equals m x plus c because this here corresponds to my x-axis. I could flip it around to make it even more obvious and say v equals minus r i plus epsilon. Now we can see the y-axis is v, the x-axis is i, and C here will correspond to the EMF of my battery, and M will correspond to minus R. So, we could use our graph then to calculate different things about this circuit here. Now then, hopefully from your GCSE maths, you'll remember that M is the gradient. So in this case, the gradient here is minus R. So I could use the gradient to work out the internal resistance of my battery. I could also use this here, C, my y-intercept, to give me the EMF of my battery. So, by altering my resistance here and going through a range of resistances, I can take different readings for voltage and current. If I plot them graphically, I can then use this equation, rearrange it, so it equals y equals mx plus c. I could then show that the gradient of this graph gives me the internal resistance of the battery and that the y-intercept, where it crosses the y-axis, tells me the EMF of the battery. It does make sense because it's obvious that this must be the EMF of the battery because when the current is zero, then you would have um, all the potential difference must be across the internal resistance of the battery because the external resistor has no resistance. Okay? Um, I will do an additional piece on internal resistance and EMF uh, in the context of a circuit and a problem with numbers in it. Okay?